Yo, what's going on guys? Chris Bonner here from Overtime Athletes. And for today's video, what I want to discuss with you guys is key factors in vertical jump development. Um, if you're not aware, about five years ago this month, I released one of my best selling programs, The Flight System. This was a program that essentially took me from a mid 30s vertical jump all the way to a 44 inch vertical standing. Um, and over the past five years, I've been consistently in the trenches working with athletes and looking and staying in the research and figuring out how we can continue to push that ceiling on an elite vertical jump. And what I wanna to start to do with you now is share those findings with you. If you guys are interested in the full program, my full program, Elite Vertical Academy, is coming out. You can check out the link down below. Um, but as always, I'm gonna to try to give you all free game that I possibly can, all right? So let's get into it. And really what I wanna do, guys, is I wanna make a series of videos here, and I'm just gonna literally brain dump all the stuff that I've been experiencing in the trenches and learning uh, to be able to deliver to you and what I'm seeing with these great results with our actual athletes, all right? So first and foremost, let's get right into it. Some of this stuff is gonna be common sense, but I'm also gonna show you how we stress these modalities to overall produce an elite vertical jump, all right? So number one, lower limb development, okay? Um, really, one of the biggest things that I think athletes and coaches are lacking is developing the foot and ankle complex, okay? This is the thing that makes contact with the ground every single time you jump, right? You wouldn't have a, a race car with a thousand horsepower without upgrading the tires, right, and suspension. So why do we not focus enough on the lower limb, the foot and ankle complex? Particularly, there's two things that we're trying to stress within that. I mean, there's all these intrinsic muscles or, or, you know, within the foot and the ankle, um, but predominantly what we're focusing on is that medial arch and the calcaneal tendon, which is also referred to as the Achilles tendon, because these are the two that are more responsible for uh, absorbing force, okay? So there's three things that we wanna do within our lower limb of uh, development to produce an elite vertical jump. Number one is, is basically just our flexibility, right? So it's just passive and active ranges of motion. A lot of guys now with our footwear in society and athletes who play, they either have those big bulky shoes, they put on ankle braces. You know, I have football guys who spat up and tape up their ankles. It decreases the range of motion. Not only does that lead to injury, but it also doesn't allow you to fully work through that range of motion. So we want to increase the passive and active ranges of motion, all right? We do that through basic static stretches and you know a, diff a couple different other modalities. Next, we want to increase the elastic strength within, again, that medial, uh, medial arch and that Achilles tendon. Um, if you think of elastic strength, that's just that, that our, our body's ability to have that rubber band-like effect that when it absorbs massive force stretch, it's able to shorten rapidly. Um, and there's ways that you do that through low-level plyometrics in a series of progressions through the foot and ankle complex. And then finally, which I think is another one that a lot of athletes and coaches don't utilize enough, is, is increasing the static strength through the foot and ankle, right? So we do this by performing you know, uh, heavy resisted movements or unilateral strength movements, right? Where the foot is actually um, placed where the heel is raised and you're actually producing force through the ball of the foot. A lot of times all of our compound movements or unilateral movements are all done ground based with our heels on the ground. But when you actually watch action on the field or court, you're moving through the balls of the feet. So by actually having the athlete move to the balls of the feet on particular movements, we can increase the static strength, which is essentially increasing the tendon stiffness through that Achilles and medial arch. That's how we, uh, that's the big things we're focusing on here with lower limb development. The next is knee stability, right? So moving up from the foot, ankle, up to the next uh, chain of command is the knee. And really across the knee, what we're trying to do is, although it absorbs and it does produce force across knee flexion and extension, 
it is more meant to be able to act as uh, uh, you know stabilization right this is where majority of the pain comes from uh, the injuries come from and really what we're trying to do within this is create a strong stable knee so that the hip can better produce uh, torque okay so what we're trying to focus on here through the knee stability is uh, usually injuries come from the knee non-contact most of the time it can be mechanical but for majority of the time it's going to be through a restricted range of motion through the foot or hip okay so the knee takes the brunt of the stress and things start uh, essentially start to go at high velocity movements the next thing that we want to focus on for knee stability is tendon strength so this is actually increasing uh, the strength of the tendons and ligaments across the knee. You know, we have things such as, you know, ISO step downs, D cell step downs, uh, band TKEs, things where you're working at a higher active range of motion and increasing the actual strength. And then finally, we want to strengthen the muscles that are actually responsible for stabilizing the knee. This is things such as the hamstrings and the VMO. And there's particular ways that we stress and progress those to increase to overall uh, deliver peak performance to that athlete all right guys and then finally just to touch on it real quick uh this is obviously the bread and butter is is upgrading the engine right and if you think about your hip strength and power that's your actual engine that you're trying to add more torque and horsepower to okay and this is where i've seen some of my greatest developments um, or evolution from the flight system to see just amazing results with the athletes here inside my gym you guys if you follow along with instagram or youtube you're seeing some of these athletes hit like crazy jumps uh it, it's how we're particularly stressing the body in a sequential order and really what i've done is i've modified triphasic training if you guys aren't familiar with triphasic training uh, it's a it's a particular style of training by a strength and conditioning coach Cal Dietz amazing coach He's up there in Minnesota um, This is the book that I was put on to uh, When I was going for my 44 inch vertical it got me over that that a 40 inch kind of plateau and and it you know I was th thinking I was gonna hit a 42 and I ended up hitting a 44 um, and over the past five years, as I've been installing and utilizing this protocol with my athletes, uh, me as the coach with all these experiences, I've constantly tested and experimented, and uh, I've found a way to modify this style of training, which I'm gonna get into in the next series of videos that has absolutely produced amazing results. Not only does it make sense to the science, but it makes sense because the results that I'm seeing are just astronomical, okay? So really what we're trying to do here is, is there's, a, there's a particular sequential order of how you need to stress the body to receive maximal adaptation. Okay, and, uh, and like I said, we'll get into that in the next video, but all we do is we're focusing on building blocks on top for the athlete to reach ultimately peak performance or peak vertical jump, right? And the other uh, big finding that's rather common sense, but I don't see a lot of athletes and coaches doing it is the plyometrics need to match the strength, right? So when you're stressing the body in a particular sequential order, you need to have the, the plyometrics in your jump training, your dynamic movement at high velocities, those that progression needs to follow along with how you're progressing them in your actually in your actual resistance training and when you do that you get maximal adaptation for that particular uh, modality that you're stressing so that's one of some of the biggest stuff that I've seen uh, as far as what I'm seeing here with my athletes uh, to produce um, in the next series of videos I'm gonna dive deeper into some of these things as including you know the best periodization and how i've actually modified triphasic to produce elite vertical jump with my athletes so i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video